Welcome back to Build the Skate Park. Today we're gonna go ahead and finish. I'm gonna try to finish our street course. I know it's been a long, long road watching three hours of building a skate park, but here's what I got so far. In the last lesson, we talked about making ledges, hubbas, you know, different types of stairs at different angles. I think it's turning out pretty good. So let's continue. All right, I wonder if I should put a rail down this side or some kind of ledge, down ledge, kind of like this one. Why not, right? So in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line from corner to corner. I like to make a little sketch pad or sketch surface. Let's make this one smaller. And go 1.5 on this. Connect at the bottom. Just had a cool idea. Maybe we should go out a little bit. Oh, I have no idea what happened there. Oh, because it's not 1.5 from here and down. It's actually probably two foot because of the stair. From here to here is 1.5. That would make two. Two foot. Like that. Right? Let's go ahead and extrude it out. I know I say extrude, but it's actually press and pull. 0.67 is 8 inch. Because if you want to use masonry like blocks, 8 inch is good. Uh, yeah, there's a little gap here, and I can definitely fix that. How to fix it? Well, let's just move it away. About 50 should work. There we go. What I'm going to do is just bring this bottom face all the way down. It's as simple as clicking on a line using the move tool and go down. Same thing over here. Click on the line, use move, make sure it stays on the blue axis. Same thing, you can uh, hold shift to snap to that axis. A permanent snap. <coughs> and let's move it back. Just notice I'm always keeping everything on the axis. Make a group. So this is kind of cool, there's a gap to ledge. I'm going to slide it over so you don't see these, um, you know, see that little, little stairs going through it. Do point 0.1, probably work. Now if I wanted to, I could bring this out. I'm trying to check if we have another element like that, and we don't. So let's press and pull. How far do you think we should go? Because that could be a euro bump to ledge, right? Let's go seven foot. Seven or eight foot is pretty good. So you can bump, you know, Euro gap and hit it at the top here. I like that. Pretty cool. I was thinking about it. This rail is nice, but I wonder if it should be at an angle going this way. The only problem is it might be too close to this ledge. So maybe I'll just leave it straight. For now. Right? So now I want to create our angle iron or coping. Prefer to call it angle iron. I'm going to copy those lines, paste into place, and I'm going to draw our angle iron. Same way I always do, start at the corner, point 0.1, and then point zero 0.01, and then you go to the other side. There might be a faster way to do this, but this really isn't slow. And then we're going to use follow me. And it should follow. Yeah, look at that. The entire thing. That is so nice. So here's a question. 
Should I draw another face of the angle iron on this side or just copy and paste the existing one? It may take about the same amount of time because copy and pasting it. Uh oh, I think I just crashed SketchUp again. I don't know why it does this. And I didn't save it. Oh, I hit save. Let's see if it actually worked. Let's try this again. Yes, it's Doom, th Doom in the background. Doom 2016. There are some issues with control C, control V to copy and paste. And it, it seems like it's not crashing, but it kind of is. Let's see if it's saved. I did a quick save in the middle of the crashing. Ha, oh, it did save. Okay, so from now on, I know that if I don't save it in time. So control C, control V, there we go. That is not a common problem with SketchUp. It just has to do with the way I'm using it in Linux. So I'm going to flip this along. Green. I don't know why I moved it over. I shouldn't have bothered. There we go. There's our angle iron on our ledge. Regroup. So I have a couple of bump to bar. Obviously this bump to bar it only works on this side. You can't go up the stairs obviously. So that would be it can be awkward depending on which stance you have, goofy or regular. This one, same thing. Oh man, I didn't even realize it. You can only hit it from this side, but you can hit it from the stairs down and this rail. You can also, you can even hit the bar and then go down the rail or just go down the rail from the stairs. So there's a lot of good options there. I still want to fix this, but that's, that's not important at this point. What's important is finishing. All right, so there's our street section. I still kind of feel like it would be nice to have a wedge or something in the middle. If I had more time, I'd widen in, widen this entire area. But let's go ahead and build something in the middle. I love pyramids, so a pyramid is going to be a good option. Let's do one on the side, like a half pyramid. So always start with the not always, but it's good to start with the rectangle. Or Start with the, um, let's see, let's do like a three foot. Let's start with drawing one side of the pyramid. We can copy paste. Flip this around. Looks nice. Whoops. Whenever I press and pull and click too quick, that's what happens. So there's a pyramid. You know what I forgot? I forgot to do our little um, curved edge. Nobody wants to hit a, hit a corner like that. So one foot. Reset. A. I didn't even notice. Anytime I reset, I press space for the selection tool and hit A and it shows you the sides on the right over here. 12 is good. Delete that little line. So now you have one single face. We'll do a copy. I did three feet on this one side, so this is six feet across. It's a good size. And it's only three feet high. That way you can do a couple pushes, go down this wedge, and have plenty of speed to get over. And um, ten feet should be good. That might be a little too big. And one important thing to remember is anytime you hit a rail, you're going to speed up because it's going down. So by the time you land, you're going to have a lot of speeds, but you also need a good amount of area to land on so you can land and roll. So there's a chance I might widen this entire street section. Sorry, not widen, lengthen. Let's go 20. 
like that. I think it looks a lot better. Because once you hit this rail and land, you want to hit something in the middle, but you need space to land. You know, have a good, decent landing. <coughs> I just had an idea. Could be crazy. This is just a one sided pyramid. Why don't we make it multi sided? What I'm going to do is go back to just the one side that we created. And I'm going to draw a line on the green axis. 10 feet, 6 feet, 10 feet. And I'm going to see if I can follow me around this so it creates a third edge, like an actual pyramid. It just might work. Yeah, like that. So I swear, follow me is so cool. Wow, I just had another idea. What if I left the gap? You know, some guys like, like having a little gap in the middle. So let's do this. Let's build a rectangle inside. Let's raise it up because it's ridiculous to have a three foot gap. Oh, I don't like that. So anytime it's blue like that, reverse face and then press and pull. Let's go two foot. I don't want the whole thing to be a gap though, just part of it. In that case, I'm going to draw a line down the middle and then bring this up the rest of the way. So now what they can do is come down, hit the hip, which will point them in another direction over here. And we'll have something over here in the middle where they can come up. Lots of options here. And this way I can put maybe a rail or a hubba or something going up and down this you know, the pyramid. I do have some extra lines here, which I'm not going to need. See that little dot? I don't know if you can see that in the video. It's just an extra line coming down. And you can also be, always just delete a face just to see. Yeah, I don't have any extra faces or vertices or anything inside. Make it a group. Remember what I showed you before, you can make all of these into components instead of groups. And the reason why is you can reuse them later. But uh, the whole point of my video is showing you, you can just sit down and improvise. Remember to save and just create an entire skate park. I still feel like we need more space in the middle. Especially with right here, this is really just jammed in there. So now I can draw a rail across the top if I wanted to. And that's really not a bad idea. Let's do it. Or hubba. something fairly small. So I'm going to go 1 1.5. 1.5. And then basically deleting these extra lines because once you um, press and pull, it'll just create extra lines for you, and we don't want that. Let's go one foot. And yes, I'll do the angle iron in this as well. So I can bring this guy over. I don't want to have a gap on the bottom. So I move it and snap it to right here. Like that. So here's another feature. You could go up and ollie over this hub and land on the other side. Or you can just do a hip, which will point you in another direction, like up here. Or 
where you can clear the gap. I can make the skate park wider and create something on this other side, but for now I'm going to leave it just like this. Save, because you know what happens when you don't save, you lose all of your work. Okay, angle iron. This one's hard because it's at an angle. Angle, angle iron. That's funny. 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, hold shift, snap, click click there we go and then what I need here is a line perpendicular the best way to do that is go into the group click roll your mouse over this edge and SketchUp already knows what perpendicular is it's right there get out of the group and then we're going to use Q on the green axis click click I don't have a name for the first and second click, but you see what I'm doing. You kind of get the idea. I also want to keep things pure, so I remove this line from inside the group. It was just a guide. And I have t two choices. I can either draw another line across the top, which is fairly quick, or just copy and paste the existing one. Whatever you feel like doing. Okay, so let's do follow me. Hey, what happened? It stopped. Sometimes it's hard to get the entire thing to go. Why does it keep stopping? There we go. And over. And down. Yes, you can zoom and scroll or zoom and pan while you're doing follow me. Sometimes I think the command is going to stop. There we go. Now, if you're real particular like I am, you can click on this, and it will change the shape. You know, this um, this angle iron, like the thickness. But it just looks much better. Because you know they can do this. They can just, the angle iron would come off and they would cut it flat. So that's what I'm trying to mimic. Do that to this side as well. And then copy paste. Hopefully not crash SketchUp. So t t in order to rotate this, we have to be on the green axis. It's very difficult. There we go. Sometimes just zooming in helps. Bam. I'm in. Or I'm in. Alright, I'm going to save it real quick just because I want to do... You don't have to copy and paste control C. You can always do M. Just move it over. Flip along. Whoops. I'm going to try green. And then move it in. There we go. One hubba. Multi-sides. Looking good. You know, I want to make is one of those um, loading ramp um, ledges, or you know, how I have like a bar and then it stops. I would love to do that. But where to do it? That's the question. We just don't have enough space, do we? And if I put it right in the middle, that'll completely mess you up when you're hitting this hip. Because you want to go down and you're going to run into it. Oh. I just only left a, a ledge here. Let's fix that. I love it when it deletes a line for you. What's going on? Did I crash it again? What the heck? Oh, I didn't finish it. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes I get ahead of myself. There we go. There, now they have a way to roll up. 
think the only ones I didn't do that on are these two because they're you see how they're at an angle so an angle this way and angle that way I guess I could try press and pull but I don't think it goes at an angle like that let's try it I'm going to draw outside the group just because I'm doing a test Yeah, see? It only press and pulls in a straight line. So it might be a better way to do that. Maybe if I if I rotate this object. I really love that um that curved edge so you can just roll up and hit your bank. Twenty Using that as a guide. So rotate needs to be on the blue axis. Sometimes you gotta flip upside down. Blue, first click. It's where to start. Or where your center of circumference center of your circle arches. Oh my gosh, that was totally messy. What the heck? That line isn't even touching. Let's do this again. Endpoint. Green axis doesn't matter how long it is. Can do a Q. So here's the center, and then here's where you want to start your rotation, and here's where you want to end your rotation, right? Do one foot arch. Oh, interesting. Just gonna have to eyeball it. I had to click twice to finish that. What the heck? What the heck is it doing? Oh my gosh, you see what happened? It's at an angle. Yeah, this would be a lot harder than I thought it would be. Oh, you see that? That is that's straight. my wedge is not so anyways I think I'm going to skip I'm not going to mess with that for now yes yeah, so I always do clean up always cleaning things up as I go for example these stairs we could just go explode explode delete that line delete this line and now they're all part of the same object once you like where it's at you can basically write it in stone and save so I don't know if this would be a good spot over here but I'm going to try it so what I'm talking about is you have let's see let's go with six foot Let's go six by six. Six, comma, six, enter. Wow, that is really tiny. <laughs> Let's do more than six. All right, let me delete that. I didn't realize it'd be that small. It's hard to visualize. Let's go 10, comma, 10. It's better. What do you think, about three feet? And then what you do is create a really long bank coming off. Do my little smooth edge. Love that. Oh, you know why it, it um, deleted the line? Because I'm just creating a line and an arch. If I had already created the back line to complete the face, then it would not delete it. So interesting. So there we go, there's our face. Press and pull. 
right? So it goes to a loading ramp. Might be a little too wide. And I feel like it's too close to this area right here. Let's just make it a little less wide. So two foot. Now it's six foot wide. Or no, eight. It's eight foot wide. And then I'm basically going to create a rail that comes all the way up. It would be pretty tall. I'm going to go with 2.5 even though that's not realistic. Or maybe I should do one side 2.5, other side 3 foot. Two different heights. I'm just using this for someone to draw a face because I want this angle. I want to be able to go up. Right? Am I thinking this correctly? It's always good to learn a more efficient way to draw if possible. There's perpendicular. Uh, it just seems easier just to draw the whole object, you know, like draw a face and just delete it later. Like this. I don't know why, it just seems quicker. I'm going to do a circle, 24. That's how the sights disappeared, press C. You'll see 24 down here. I'll change that to 10. So I'm just making a rail. Do point 0.1. Press and pull. Actually, I don't want to press and pull yet. Because I want to go up and then across and around. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm going to use this side. So my rail is going to go here to here like that and instead of trying to draw the lines in a different spot you just copy paste like that it creates kind of a you know because there'd be a door here if there was a building that's exactly what I'm mimicking so let's do following what I try to do for follow me is make sure all the lines are in the screen. Oh, you see what I did wrong here? Yep. You can't just move it. Well, let's see if you can. You can. Okay. I thought I was going to move this entire line and make it wider. Wait a second. Something looks wrong here. Yeah, something went wrong. I'm going to try that again. From corner. Corner. Sometimes things don't line up. Alright, that looks good. I have no idea what happened. So anyways, move this over. You know, at the top of this is probably too long, isn't it? It should be shorter. So that's an easy fix, but we have to do it on the multiple planes. Let's go with three foot. Because you want them to be able to all the way from here and clear that rail, or grind and go over. I'm going to go on one more foot. Just going to be nice. This is kind of a pro element. Maybe not particularly for uh, your everyday skate park. I'm going to hold shift so it lines up to that face. I'm going to save real quick. SketchUp saves really quick because this is all vector. There's no raster images. Now if you start adding textures to everything, it'll take longer to save. So anyway, let's go back to following. 
I try to make sure all the lines are in the screen so you don't have to pan and, and zoom. Doesn't always work, but look at that. That's exactly what I wanted. Delete this. Reverse face. Make a group. Save. See how quick that was? Imagine drawing every single one of these lines going in a circle to create a rail. No way. Not going to do it. Okay. So now we need to create just a simple. It can't be point 0.1, it's got to be a little bit smaller. Like point 0.08. This will be our posts. That failed. Let's snap right to the line. There we go. Now, clearly it wouldn't be there, it would be in a little bit, but that's a mistake I just made. Because you wouldn't have it going down on the side, it would be in. So that means I need to redraw this whole thing a little bit on the inside, don't I? Dang it. Alright. I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to try it. This is fill it. Nope, it won't work. But it will work in the top here. See how it's going on the inside? You want to go like 0.25, very small. Because your post can't come down on the outside of your object. And then we can simply just use M, control to copy, and control copy. Let's move our object back over to the, the face of our rail and now we can delete the old one. There we go. So now it's a little bit on the inside so when we draw our posts it makes sense on how you build it. That's another thing as you design elements for your skate park can it actually be built? You have to think about that. Now of course anything can be built but can it be built and can it be skatable? Now remember, there's still a line here in the middle. You can actually click that point and it should delete all of them. There's no way to tell for sure. I'm kind of a purist. See, it's gone. There's no point in having extra lines just hanging out. Reverse face. Oh, that's that's crazy. I thought it would reverse face on the ends and it didn't. Not sure why. Make a group. Save. Now if we wanted to, I might do this, is cut off this end and just stop it right here. And maybe make another element on this side. Maybe, uh, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to do it. I just decided. Oh, look at that. Why is this connected? I should be able to go like this. It's connecting the whole thing. See all those faces are selecting? It should only select half. Can I do press and pull? I can. Okay. It won't let me go all the way. Oh, this is kind of messy. Oops. Remember to keep your cursor exactly where you want to rotate the camera to. Ah, that's why. All I have to do is connect the line on the other side and it should separate those faces. Yeah, right here. I don't know why that happened. Still doing it. Oh, you see what happened? 
there's a gap. So it's great for you to see that because one single gap causes problems. Let's go delete. Let's draw this properly. Here to there. There we go. Yeah, it's at an angle, so what? I'm wasting time. You'll see what I'm going to do next. We'll save. Let's get our post created. Can't just leave a floating rail. Let's see, it was point zero 0.08. And the up about as high as this rail. I apologize if you hear any mowing sounds. Our lawn's currently being mowed. And now move it over to, well, I think it's 0.25. Yeah, it's actually over a little too much. Let's do, oops. Let's do 0.24. That looks good. Make a group. And now for the tedious copy paste all your posts, but is it that tedious? It doesn't have to be. So use your M command. I'm gonna keep them about two and a half apart. It really doesn't matter how far you put it. And click once. And now before you touch anything, we're gonna add a command. Let's do five uh, X. That means five times. Oh, look at that. I never get that lucky. Wow. Okay. Man, that was painless. We're doing another one. I have to put it on the edge because I need a reference point and then point two four. Oh look, it's too tall. It's going through. It's no problem. It's a group, not a component, which means when you make a change they don't all change. That's the downside of a component. If these are components, if I change the size of this one, they all change. I'm going to do, I'm just going to shoot from the middle. I'm going to eyeball it. Like that. I do like 2.5 and we know how far it is to get to the, m the middle of that pole it's 0.24 or it's not that's good enough don't stress on making all these exactly perfect now if you have the pro version let's see 2.5 of SketchUp, then what you can do is you can combine these. There's a join command. It's very handy, but in most cases, it's really just it's not necessary. Just isn't. If you're doing game design, it is necessary. But who uses SketchUp for game design? I wish I could. I love SketchUp. I would love to push and pull this back, but it's not going to work. Though, I might be able to do move. Just select only the face. Yeah, look at that. There we go. Alright, so there's our loading dock element. First of all, it's way too close here. And the poor, poor guys that come down this side have nowhere to go. So I might change this location. I don't know. Ooh, I do know where to put it. Because remember I said if I jump over this hip, you would hard time hitting it. Okay, I have an idea. Let's move all of this back. I knew I should have left those stairs not connected. Let's go back five foot. This is one of the great features of SketchUp, making changes on the fly. You know, you have a design that you like but you want to add some space. There you go. I'm thinking of taking this, this pyramid, and putting it on this side. So you can put this loading dock on this side. 
What do you think? First of all, let's group this whole entire thing. Here's another idea too you, you probably don't know about. I can make this a component and I can use it in other other SketchUp um, files. So basically what I would do is, um, is save it as its own SketchUp file, SKP, and then you can load that into your template with all your other components and then you can make a component out of it. Or it, anytime you load a SketchUp file into a SketchUp file, it automatically inherits all the components in that file. But that's for a completely other lesson. Right now, it's all about building. Let's flip this. Yeah, that's funny. Sometimes I can't get the directions right. Flip along green. Yeah, this might work. It's like I said, you need room to slide and land and you don't want to be heading straight at another rail. Same with right here. Now this ledge isn't going to speed you up, it's not going downward. So you can land, but then you're just going to hit this immediately. So I'm thinking of making it a bit wider, or it's not that wider, longer. Let's go like another 10 foot. Gonna take our concrete at the bottom and pull that out. Probably have to do the same thing here. No, it looks good. Okay. See, that's a lot more space. Oh, how long has it been? About 40 minutes. You get the idea. Start quickly putting elements in the middle so you can hit one side. And something I wanted to do here, you know, first of all, let's flip this whole thing. No, like that, because I want to make it so when you come this direction, there's something here to play on. Now I'm thinking about it, this wedge is very long, it's a loading dock. And maybe it was better the other way. Oh, anyways, let's create a little wedge coming off of this. Up three foot. Let's go nine foot. That. Now here's the instance where it's not going to delete the line when I create this curve. So arch, 12 sides is fine. See? If there is no face here, it would automatically delete that line. No biggie. It happens. Oops. Let's go six foot. This way when you come down you have something to go to. In fact, I'm thinking of doing the same thing as I have here. But maybe I'll make it a lot longer. I don't know. I don't want it to impede on this rail. But I do want people to go up and hit this rail if they want to. That creates another problem. If someone wanted to go up this loading dock and hit this rail at the top. Right? Hit this the goal is to ollie over it, but if you wanted to hit it, grind it, you're going <laughs> to land on this edge. There's either a drop or an edge. You want to hit the edge. I don't know. Let's play around with this idea. I really don't want to do a part three. Six foot. Do you follow me? And no, it won't do a middle for you unless I drew it all the way around, but we don't want this wedge to go all the way around. So it's as simple as just going bam, bam, there's your top. 
Save. I like this, but is this really what we want? What if I were to move it? It's right here. Is that awkward? A little bit. Oh, there's a hole in the side. That's easy to fix. Let's move it straight up on the blue axis. Let's go 10 feet up. The reason why I move it 10 is because I want to put it back down exactly at 10 feet. Oops. I do not want that. Delete. Delete. Now to make sure there's no extra planes or faces inside, there isn't. You can always just delete one side. Now let's move it back 10 feet. The one thing I know skaters like is not having to push. Now of course you're going to have to push no matter what, but once you start your line, if you don't have to push, it makes everything much easier. So what if, what if I went down like a foot? Does that mean I have to redo the whole thing? Yes. All right. Because if I just move it down, you're going to mess up this curve. Right? Well, let's try this. What if I do scale? Will that mess up that edge? No. Right? That edge looks pretty nice. I still don't know why I did ten, 12 faces. I'm going to have to stop soon. You, pr you can probably hear the lawn mowing. Let's match this to our loading dock edge. Unfortunately, there's no way to snap to it using scale. Use move. But that looks pretty good. It's not perfect. Okay, so now we have a tiny pyramid. Big pyramid, tiny pyramid. This looks a little funny. But that's fine. You get where I'm going with this. Lots of stairs, ledges, some elements in the middle, plenty of room to land your trick and hit another element. So now you can go down this way, hit this pyramid, all the way up and grind this rail if you wanted to. It's a nice long rail, kind of a gap as well. You have to ollie pretty high, of course. Or you can hit it the other way. All right, that's it for today. I would love to do a part four, but that means I'm going to finish the middle areas, and I'm also going to color code everything. So if you want to see a part four, let me know. Save your work. Enjoy making your skate park.